The freshly deported Novak Djokovic has returned to Serbia, where the unvaccinated world number one was met with a hero's welcome after a tumultuous trip down under. But outside the Park Hotel in Melbourne, where the tennis star was briefly put into immigration detention, the cameras have moved on. The building's other long-term occupants once again feel forgotten. That's right now all I'm thinking about, you know, taking a walk on the beach or in the streets or in the city or whatever. Mountains, maybe bushes. That's all I need, which I haven't done that for nine years. Refugee advocates estimate about 32 men are currently being held in this hotel and that about 25 have refugee status. Most came to Australia by boat in either 2012 or 2013 and their detention has cost taxpayers millions of dollars. There's just dozens of us left, less than 300 in offshore and less than 70 people in onshore and thousands of people are being released. Why are we still in detention? Well, for the sake of policy, because billions of dollars are involved as sacrifices? I'm not sure. No one can answer me. As the spotlight, the Djokovic saga shone on this building and Australia's broader detention network fades, lawyers for some of the men here say the Prime Minister has misrepresented and minimised their plight. It's not clear that, um, in, in, to, my not, to my information, that someone in that case is actually a refugee. They may have sought asylum and been found not to be a refugee and have chosen not to return. We have very clear rules about who can and who can't come into this country. Well, it's confounding uh, to hear the Prime Minister say that, given that he was the Immigration Minister around the time when these people were being found to be refugees in the offshore processing centres. So the Prime Minister is either um, incompetent or he's not telling the full truth here. In response to questions from 7.30, a spokesman for the Prime Minister declared he'd never said there were no refugees at the hotel and clarified that the government is seeking to resettle some of the men in other countries. Refugee advocates say the detainees were mostly medevac to Australia from offshore detention centres in Nauru or Papua New Guinea because they needed treatment and that over the past year more and more have gradually been released into the community while their cases are finalised. They're found to be refugees, they can be released into the community and we know that being locked in detention is actually doing more harm than any good. So um, I really don't understand the government's policy stance and why they're keeping them in detention. The Labor opposition appears to broadly agree, arguing it's a more humane and cost-effective option. Conditions in the Park Hotel have been repeatedly criticised and last year it grappled with a COVID outbreak. People do need to be in some form of administrative detention while the outcome of their case is being determined or while they're waiting for a transfer to the United States. But that doesn't mean they have to be held uh, in cruel conditions. For people who have been found to be refugees, uh, they shouldn't be kept in detention indefinitely without a solution being found. The Immigration Detention Network is designed as a deterrent to stop asylum seeker boats ever coming to Australia again. And the government has been clear. No one who arrived by sea will be permanently settled here. There's no limit on how long detainees could remain in limbo while they try to secure a place in other countries such as Canada or the United States. I mean, the easiest option is for the government to actually resettle people who have been found to be genuine refugees and change their policy. That is the fastest and easiest way, but um, the government has said they're not going to do that. It was designed to be collective punishment to show just how cool we could be as a means of deterring anyone else from potentially seeking to exercise their human right to seek asylum in Australia. The government didn't answer 730's specific questions about the men in the Park Hotel. Instead, Border Force sent us a statement which simply restated current policy and noted that the government won't comment on individual cases or operational details. Refugee advocates are familiar with such responses. As an election approaches, they hope Australia's politicians might focus on finding more permanent resettlement options to end this situation as soon as possible. What is the matter is when, and that's the issue, when that I'm going to be free, but where it doesn't matter.
Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.